What's up guys, Joe with Tradger Farms. I'm a habitat specialist with Whitetail Habitat Solutions alongside Jeff Sturgis and the gang. Hope everyone's doing well. A little bit of road noise uh, probably, so I apologize. Wanted to talk to you today about hiring a habitat manager. One of us from Whitetail Habitat Solutions and just anyone in general give you a pointer or two, something that can help you out if you're thinking about bringing someone uh, over to your property. Um, I haven't been to the farm in uh, a few days for sure, maybe a week or so, and I know we've been working on the barn a lot, and that's still what I gotta be working on the next time I go. I'm gonna be heading down to Georgia here soon. Um, had a good time in Tennessee. Uh, I think I might have said Kentucky in an earlier video, I'm not sure, but it was Tennessee, and it was a lot of fun, big property, and um, some Michigan clients uh, lately that are just kinda close to my house. I call it a local visit, uh, but anyway, um, looking to get power run to that pole barn, which is going to be a lot of fun. And I was planning on clearing a 12 foot wide strip through some brush for consumers to get through and dig the underground trench. Now that it's been so freaking cold, I'm thinking I can get the tractor and run the new brush hog and uh, hopefully get the path cleared quite easy, minus some bigger, uh, some bigger trees that I might need to use the uh, chainsaw for and get that done. So I'm looking forward to getting that out of the way so they can get in there and uh, get the job done so I can have some lights <laughs> and some stuff like that, um, which I'll make that uh, video um, probably Sunday when I get out there. Um, but anyway, today I wanted to touch on, again, hiring someone and really two main principles that I've been kind of picking up on lately and thought I would just level with some of you guys so that um, if you do call or maybe you want to have us out in the future, you kind of have a little bit of an expectation. And the first thing is going to be when hiring a habitat manager is schedule wise, what can you expect for us guys? And at least, you know, we're in uh, most of us, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota. If you're in these Northern States, you know, most of the time we're going to be going south or at least those of us doing fly-ins, we're going to go south for a lot of these winter months, January, December, February, March, because the snow could get so bad where if I have, let's say a four or five, six, seven, eight day visit and we get two feet of snow in an area or more, we're going to run into some issues. My hip flexors might not make it through the visit and it might not sound like a lot, but you know, we want to give a hundred percent to every property we're at, give them just as good of a plan as anyone else would get. And I would always hate for that to be an issue if you couldn't get around a, pro a property properly and enough um, to do that. So, you know, I've had a ton of people, not a ton, I've had a few people lately, more than normal for whatever reason, you know, call me when most of us, Jeff and everyone are, are kind of wrapping up our schedules, right? We're filling in dates, July, August, September, and, uh, you know, getting the little spaces filled in uh, with the last few people and stuff. And um, I've been speaking with some people that really are still expecting March or, or something like that, or a spring date. And it's not just that I'm touting we fill up quickly because we're good or anything like that. It's just one, we do see a lot of clients. It's actually a blessing that we see clients, you know, nine, eight months out of the year where a lot of people don't, it's just spring and winter, but we're getting to some of those southerly states while we can, we don't need to worry about snow. And then we'll start scheduling our driving trips after a couple months. Now we've already been scheduling those for quite some time, but I just, you know, I had Jeff out to my property years ago in August. I was his last stop in Michigan that year. I want to say it was August 20th. And, you know, of course it, it wasn't ideal. And I really, you know, scraped up the pennies I could at the time uh, to get him out there. One of the best things I ever did, and uh, my property's come such a long way, it's, it's been uh, a real blessing. But at the same time, you know, I knew I was only going to get so much done when he came out in August. But what not a lot of people are thinking about is even the minimal stuff you can do a last minute food plot or prepping for the following year, right? Because if let's say so and so if it's not even us, whoever can't get to you till April, May the following year, don't you think having someone out in August, July, what have you is still going to be beneficial to prepping an area or even the timber stand improvement or other stuff that you might do in the winter when your season is done. If you look back at my video last year, you'll see I have quite a few videos 
um, where I was doing timber stand improvement before the season even ended. I was done, had taken a deer, I'm just excited. We all, I feel like you get to a point, you know, every year um, you get that initial stuff, but then you're, you're, you're tweaking things, you wanna add some stuff and you're just ready to go um, once you've kind of hunted for quite a few days during the season. Um, you just wanna make the next year better. And uh, so it's always going to be better. And if, you know, it's important uh, to you to have us out, I would still strongly consider be a little more flexible uh, with your schedule. Um, just because I know once we get out there and, and we, you know, get the plan done and you hear everything to do and that we recommend, you're going to be uh, so excited and you'll be glad that we were there, even if it was a little bit uh, into the summer or later in the year than if we didn't come at all or you had someone else out, most people. I'm uh, just going to put that out there. So... I, uh, you know, hate that it's a surprise to people. But we have the conversation quite a bit. It's just my opinion. Um, and I'm so glad that I didn't change my opinion when I had Jeff out again years ago. And um, I'm so glad that I still got to work on those things early winter come that next year. Spray Simazine for switchgrass, timber sand improvement. I mean, get your, get your plantings ordered. So many things, you know, I think most of you would agree. It becomes a year-round ordeal to... Um, you know, when th this whole habitat thing, there's, there's so much to do in so many different parts of the year, even, you know, it's more, how much time do you have to give than it is, um, you know, anything else. So again, be maybe a, a touch more flexible. We want to see you guys. We just do what we can. I, I travel the maximum amount of time that I can be away from my family is basically what it comes down to. If I did any more, things would just get out of whack. Uh, and I think that probably goes for most of us with, with Dylan and Kevin and Jeff and, and everyone. So um, hope that makes sense. The other thing I would say is when we get out there, guys, um, you know, it's going to be most beneficial to you if you have a little bit of due diligence when it comes to, you know, uh, not just what we're going to be talking about, but even when we're done, you know, take notes, record the conversation, um, whatever is going to be in your favor to help you retain that info. And I tell every client, even in the initial phone call that I'm not going to leave you guys high and dry. If you uh, run into an issue or we miss a topic for whatever reason, you know, there's a lot to talk about. You miss one thing. We're like, man, I forgot to ask him that. We will either email or set up a call and do that. And of course, we can't do that every week. We just see too many people. I always say that. Um, but, you know, if it takes a couple weeks to get to you, it takes a couple weeks, we're going to get that answered. Now we have Wes and even Jen and other people um, at kind of headquarters in Minnesota to help additionally and seed questions and all this other stuff. So um, I hope you guys have been getting that feedback, but have had, um, you know, an individual in the past doesn't make any sense to name names. It's not a huge deal, but I felt a little bit like um, they had forgotten even some of the basic stuff that we talk about, you know, um, you know, size of food plots and, uh, you know, when we measure things out or put it on the design and, you know, kind of basic switchgrass stuff and we leave you with specific steps and specific herbicides and, you know, how much and how wide and things that are so, so common, you know, I know we wouldn't miss it. Uh, and in this case, it was just so many things. I knew that so much of the discussion went kind of either in one ear, out the other, or just didn't get taken down, um, you know, at that visit. And, and I felt bad just because, you know, again, we, you know, we spend so much money to get these um, uh, plans done. You really want to retain everything. And personally, when Jeff came out, I remember and most of you watch a ton of his videos um, and we love seeing everyone at different levels. The brand new beginner, I have been to clients that did not know who Jeff Sturgis was. Honest to God, perfectly fine. Doesn't bother me one bit. Teaching at every level is actually a blessing. I love it. You know, the very beginner and the advanced guys looking to really just hone in on a few things. Um, I love every bit, but when we're there and you've spent the money, um, it's important to take down uh, and or record the conversation. I, I don't mind. I don't know if all the rest of the guys do or not. So you have something to refer back to. You can reference and kind of put your best foot forward, if you will, on the money that you're spending so that you can implement the plan. And so anyways, in this particular case, um, I knew that uh, most of the stuff 
was not retained. And I'm 99% sure we did record a video, um, uh, not a video, but a, a recording in this case so that they could refer back to. And I'm, I'm sure they didn't uh, because usually it's an hour, two hour long conversation uh, and they would have had a lot of those questions answered. So personally, what I was saying was when Jeff came, I uh, through those videos had taken down some notes on timeline and gathered, you know, his system and what I wanted to implement and kind of figured a lot of that out. So when he came, I had the design, I had a list of questions already. I'm spitting those off uh, to him, getting those answered, which was super helpful. I'm filling in any gaps that are in my mind. Uh, and then when he left, I wrote out, I had notes on my phone and I wrote out front and back a full page. You couldn't fit a letter on that thing. Um, on what we talked about and broke it down by category. Not when he was there, but just, you know, right when he left so I could retain the information and have that and reference it because um, him, just like all of us, you know, it's not always going to be, you can call him up the next day. It's going to take a little bit of time, possibly they're on a trip or what have you to get back to you. So um, I do not say any of these words to, um, you know, get at anyone. It's um, just something because I want you guys to maximize it. Um, and it's going to ultimately make the plan better when you, when you remember and you get squared away with these finite details. So I hope it helps. I hope if you are thinking about having someone out that, uh, you take that to heart and it helps you in the long run. But if you have any questions or a follow up, even on this stuff, um, leave the questions below guys. I'll do my best to answer and, uh, we'll be at the farm Sunday. So hopefully get to some habitat stuff here soon, but in the meantime, see you guys soon.